7.41. Good morning. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. Should we have a look at what's in today's papers? Um, joining us this morning to have a look through is Ella Whelan and Emma Burnell. And it's lovely to have you both. Thank you so much. We'll start with Ella. Sadiq Khan's lead um, in, in the race for being the next London mayor is, is getting down to 1%. <sighs> Yes, yeah, so, I mean, polls are polls, and with the, you know, necessary proviso that th things can change. It is interesting that he's reported as being just one, point, one percentage point ahead of Susan Hall. Um, and the paper goes into detail at saying that if potentially Jeremy Corbyn were to run, which it's, uh, you know, who knows, but he's... That's mooted, is it? Yes, or, I mean, crucially, he hasn't, when he was asked about it in the Edinburgh Festival, he didn't say no, he didn't say yes, he's being very sort of mm. suspicious about it. Um, if Corbyn were to run, then it would be p potentially likely that Susan Hall would win because of the new way in which the um, voting and results work. But the, I just think it's quite extraordinary that Khan, who is someone who, and, you know, uh, all, all cards on the table, I'm not a fan of Sadiq Khan, I'm not that enthused by Susan Hall as it happens, but um, that it, from someone who is... I think, so arrogant in his lead in London, um, has been incredibly bullish and uh, uh, uncompromising around the ULEZ, the expansion of the ULEZ um, just last month and the reasoning behind it, um, that he is now... Start I think there, for a long time there has been large sections of Londoners who haven't been bothered to get out and vote, who haven't been... I mean, who is interested in mayoral elections? I mean, they're a bit like local elections. Um, they don't necessarily grab people. But the new rows about the ULEZ, about low-traffic neighbourhoods, about transport in the capital city, I think have ignited some people to take part yeah. this time round. And so, actually, he, I think he probably can't be so sure of his what has been previously quite a large majority. Do you reckon, Emma? I think Ella's right that it's going to be a turnout election. Um, and... It, He's going for an unprecedented third term. No one else has ever run three times for this role. And it is harder and harder to win every time. You know, it, it, that's just how politics works. Um, I think there will be problems with introducing Susan Hall, who's not very well known to the public. She is... Um, She's not just a Conservative, and there are lots... There's, there's a myth that there are no Tory voters in London, which is an absolute myth, and it mm. always has been. But she's quite... Um, a, a strident Conservative. Mm -hmm. So she's less like your home county's sort of um, One Nation Tory. Um, and her media launch was poor um, and not a great start. But, um, it, you know, I think Sadiq does have a battle on his hands um, and he has to be able to make a case. Because she's basically... She's almost running on a single issue, which yeah. is the ULEZ. I mean, mm. she has yeah. made the ULEZ. She says that her first day in office, she will abs she will strip it, it back, it. get rid of it, remove it completely, which for a lot of people, I mean, myself <laughs> included, would be the deciding factor. Um, yeah. So it, yeah. this could be like Uxbridge all over again. It could be. I think that... I don't think Sadiq Khan can back down on you, Les. Mm. I think it's now his policy, but what he needs to do is go out and make the case for it, because it has not been well communicated. No, he's, ne he's never going to win people over with it, that's the thing. Well, I think that it's like um, low-traffic neighbourhoods. So I live somewhere where we were really an early adopter of low-traffic neighbourhoods. It was called Mini Holland in my area. And for a while, Mini Holland was basically a swear word in East 17, East 10 where I live. But now everyone's used to it and it, it actually has improved our neighbourhood. So I think if you can make a case that, you know, this will make things feel and better and also that it doesn't affect most vehicles. I mean, I, I, I drive a petrol car, it's 10 years old. It's absolutely ULEZ compliant because I'm not overcompensating for anything. Mm. Yeah, there are plenty of uh, ways that you could sell this policy better. Um, but what I think he mustn't do is back out of the policy because right. otherwise, what, what case is he making? Oh, well, interesting. It will be a very interesting election to, to watch that one. Um, Emma, quite how we go from that to the <laughs> Daily Mail, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. Um, uh, talking about intimacy for women in their 50s. Oh, and nicely put. Thank very you. Nicely put. Very nicely very, put. Yes, we'll be very gentle at breakfast about this topic. Yes. But, uh, yes, apparently... Um, They've done a big survey and there are huge differences between who is continuing to have intimate relations um, as often as possible into their later life. As often as possible. Um, 
<laughs> but <laughs> but isn't it probably true that ev everybody probably has less intimacy? Well, apparently gay men in their 60s and 70s are still just as active as they were in their 40s and 50s. Uh, whereas for women, it really does fall off after menopause. Um, your sex drive comes down. I'm sorry, I did actually use the proper use word. The word. <laughs> no, I know, we'll let you off. Um, but yeah, there are, um, I mean, there are always exceptions that prove the rule, but uh, it is the case that it, it tends to be that women just have less interest mm. um, and less drive as, as, they, as they grow older, whereas men don't tend to lose that so much. The, the, the famous line is always, Charlie Chaplin had babies in his 70s. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. 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 Al Pacino just yeah. had a kid as well. Yes, yes. he did, right. yes. <laughs> it's not going swimmingly well for yes. him at the minute, <laughs> is it? But as um, I was saying to you before we came on air, I'm 48, so I'm just going to have to do it. <laughs> get it while yes. I can. <laughs> yes, make hay while the sun shines. Yes. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, I was going to ask for your emails on that, but I shan't no, bother. No, please. <laughs> no. 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 Oh, this is interesting, Ella. Uh, in The Times, British women will soon be offered IVF with embryos selected by a. I. Yeah, I think this is fascinating. So still, still in the realm of intimacy, but probably more technically um, <laughs> minded. There is a new um, new technology offered to clinics uh, working with IVF, which will essentially use AI to. So at the moment, you you know uh, you go through the process of making an embryo and then as an embryologist you pick the best ones and they have categories. I know because my son was born through IVF and I've been through it four times um, and they have top class and going down lower and lower and you want So top. they pick the best embryo? They pick the best embryo so the, you know uh, you know the ones that are the least sort of I mean you would ideally want one with no defects but the ones that they kind of class them as A, B and C mm. and this piece of AI technology will mean that um, there is a huge amount more screening that actually it completely covers cuts the time so that um, what it does is sift through all of the data relating to these embryos and then uh, crucially allows the embryologist to have the last say mm. the embryos it, this is it's never going to eliminate so human your chances. yeah it, it's never going to eliminate uh, human input but the the reason why it's so amazing is it because it could um, raise chances of a healthy pregnancy by 30 percent wow and yeah which is at the Big. moment in you know in the NHS I mean it varies obviously in relation to trusts but it, I was always told it's about a 30 percent chance that you would get pregnant and go on to have a, a live baby um, but the which uh, in actual fact is quite a gamble and yeah. emotionally it's quite hard mm -hmm. to deal with and you are always faced with the fact that you especially as women get older that the stats start to stack against you so this kind of um, and, and actually as it happens there are so much going into um, work around uh, reproductive technologies at the moment in terms of screening in terms of different methods I mean you know there's discrepancy between I won't this is my personal bugbear between the NHS and private clinics um, is wild mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. The success rates in private clinics can be up to 70 and 80 percent. So anything like this, I think, is a real boon for people. Who yeah, are yeah, OK, we're, we're out of yeah. time, so I'm afraid. It's a fascinating afraid. subject. It really is wonderful. It is. Um, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.